It was his gift, and he was the best. What I'm saying is just assume that this guy can hear and see everything that you're doing. He's a born tactician. Every move that he makes, it means something. That's a pawn being moved off the board. And if I were you, I'd be looking for the next piece. No, you can't stop him. What's up, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Supreme Decisions. And this episode today is brought to you by Bernard. Good looking out. And also, for those of you who have not taken advantage of the Cash app and using my link, here is proof that actually, when you use my link, we both get paid once you use it. I was asked a dumbass question, and I did a live on yesterday, but also in today, episode is being videoed on the Note 10. But, so, the, the common question is, how is Shira V. Cullen, I guess plausible when you're talking about a crime and my response was the actual setup of standing there must be an injured party that's or an injury fairly traceable to the person that is accused that is shown by the accuser for someone to have standing and when you look at flast v cohen 392 us 83 1968 the fundamental aspect of standing is that it is focuses on the party seeking to get his complaint before a federal court and not on the issues he wishes to have adjudication because the fundamental aspect of standing is one that has something that can be addressed and this is why even in elk um elk grove unified school district versus newark that's a 2004 case this is why I always talk about you can only bring up your standing. You can only allege your injuries, your complaint. You can't fight for someone else because the aspect of standing is someone standing on their own. Because just like a child, as a child grows, we want the child to be able to move on their own. This is one of those aspects. This is the exact thing that we're preaching and teaching and is... We have explained that the prudential standing encompass the general prohibition on a litigants raising another person's legal rights. Because when you assert your own legal rights and interests, and they cannot rest on the claim of relief on the legal rights or interests of third parties. These are things that are often done when you're talking about the state versus someone, or even a traffic citation as one gentleman asked earlier today. Because if a plaintiff lacks standing, then courts, all courts, are legally, constitutionally incapable of proceeding because courts can only adjudicate um, judiciable, judicial controversies. And that's United States, very Interstate Commerce Commission. Because even when I spoke about Allen v. Wright, the requirement of standing, however, is a core component derived directly from the Constitution. Here's the Shear v. Cullen answer. A plaintiff must, because you remember there are a few words that go along with the biggest words in law, if and or, and must was one of those six words that were added additionally by other people that actually view this. A plaintiff must allege personal injury fairly traceable to the defendant's alleged unlawful conduct, intent, and likely to be redressed by the required or requested relief. Allen v. Wright, 468 U.S. 737, 1984. It's not an option. A plaintiff must allege personal injury. Why? Because there must be an injured party for someone to have standing. For there to be a crime, there not only must be an injured party, but it must be done with intent because even state statutes use the word intent because that is the only way a crime is committed there must be an injured party which is the corpus delecti stupid motherfuckers 
the mens rea, which would mean the guilty mind. The actus rea would mean the intent, the actus, the guilty act. So these are the things that I actually try to reinforce whenever I'm trying to give you something. Because you're unable to find it or because you're unable to learn the way I'm giving it to you. That's on you. That's why you have the option of watching these videos over and over and over and finding the shit that I'm talking about and studying it and understanding the application. Because am I going over case after case after case, going through each case and explaining the case? No, because I don't give a fuck. What I'm talking about is the actual application and how you use them to win. And I'm a, I got a couple more. The duty of the court, as of every judicial tribunal, is limited to determining rights of persons or of property, which is actually controverted. Tyler v. Judges of the Court of Registration. That is a super old case. We don't use that. But I'm using that today simply because damage to person, damage to property a personal injury there must be an injured party in order for there to be a crime petitioners lacking standing to sue when not directly injured by the defendant oops petitioners lack the standing to sue when not directly injured by the defendant which will mean they don't have something that can be alleged of personal injury which must happen which why you can't have a third party contractor which is why you can't fight for someone else because you have to have that injury not you having it it's only you that can fight for it that's why i tell you when you ask for my help i can't fight for you i can fight with you that is the only way this goes and in essence the question of standing is where the litigant is entitled to have the court decide the merits of the dispute or of particular issues. Why? Because when we're talking about the details, we're only talking about facts, not your opinion, not your feelings, because nobody gives a fuck about them. It only deals in facts, the personal injury you occur because of the injured party that must. And that's worth v selden 422 us 490 1975 so these are the questions that when you're asking them there have been multiple videos done on them these are the questions that i answer for you if you're paying attention if you're doing your research if you're not understanding how to apply them you make a phone call because the most expensive thing that you're going to carry with you throughout your life is ignorance because you're either going to pay for it with time or you're going to pay for it with money either way you're going to have to pay something you're going to have to give up something there has got to be a sacrifice in order for you to learn something that's all i got for you today i love you guys until next time